Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, and in this video I'm going to walk you through and compare and contrast uh, the differences and similarities between a scheduled and an unscheduled c-section. I have had both, and I'm going to take you through the whole thing um, once you're at the hospital, kind of how everything works, the timing of everything, and yeah, so let's get started. Okay, so before I get too far into my experience with c-sections, there are actually three. So there are Bella's, and Bella's, and Bella's. Excuse you. Do you mind? <laughs> so there are actually three types of C-sections. There are emergency C-sections, unplanned or unscheduled uh, C-sections, and scheduled C-sections. So I have had an unscheduled C-section, that was my, my first with my son, and then uh, most recently I had a scheduled c-section with our daughter. So um, I don't have any experience obviously with emergency c-sections um, and there's a little bit of a misunderstanding I think between um, what classifies an un unscheduled and an emergency c-section. Um, a lot of people think that if your c-section is unplanned that it is an emergency and that is not the case. The decision is made to have a c-section and it's all in the timing of when you make that decision and when you're actually um, in surgery. So with an unscheduled or an unplanned c-section like with my son, um, we ended up making the decision to have a c-section and it was like like an hour before we were actually you know going into surgery. Um, but with an emergency, uh, obviously it's an emergency, so that decision is a lot shorter, and I've read things that said the longest that it will take between when that decision is made and when you're actually in surgery is about 15 minutes. Like I said, I, I don't know for sure. Um, I've read that it can be as short as two minutes between when that decision is made and when you're in surgery. So um, that's like really a situation where probably someone is in distress, either mom or baby, and that decision and you know, getting into it needs to be made pretty immediately. Um, for for us, uh, I needed to be induced at 38 weeks because um, I was showing and had symptoms of preeclampsia and the induction didn't work. So that is why I ended up having a C-section. Um, after 24 hours, literally nothing was happening. I felt no contractions. Nothing physically was changing or happening with my body. And, um, you know, basically we needed to get baby out. Uh, we weren't in a stressful situation, so I was still being monitored during that time when the decision was made, and we had already kind of been told uh, earlier that morning that, hey, if this doesn't work, we might have to do a C-section, so we'd already kind of been thinking about it all day, and when we actually had to make that decision um, in the afternoon, um, it was no big deal, and like I said, about 45 minutes to an hour later is when um, I got rolling <laughs> into the surgery. So that's that's kind of how that worked. This is my experience, and it might look a little different for other people just based on your hospital. Like I know at our, at our hospital, you labor, deliver, and recover all in the same room, but I know at other hospitals, there's like you labor and deliver in one room, there's post-op rooms, and there are recovery rooms. You may get you know, move around to different rooms basically. Other things that might um, be different is kind of like the timing of things. I know one of my labor nurses said that at the previous place that she worked that um, uh, the mamas didn't eat after c-section for like 12 hours or something, or they weren't allowed to, or, or something like that. And um, I was able, or I wasn't actually able to, but um, I was actually given lunch after uh, my daughter was born, like an hour or two after uh, delivery, and uh, although I was not able to keep it down, but um, or I really wasn't hungry. It, it's a whole combination of, of both, but basically there there might be different procedures at your hospital is what I'm getting at. So um, just because I say, oh, this is what happened and this was the timing, it might look a little different uh, just depending on wherever you give birth. So keep that in mind. So I'm actually gonna I'm gonna walk you through um, my scheduled C-section because I think that makes the most sense. And really, the only difference is gonna be that pre-operation um, kind of like the prep. 
uh, and when that takes place with an unscheduled C-section. So I'll just kind of walk you through um, when that takes place if you're having an unplanned C-section or, or how it worked when I had my son. So here we go. Okay, so with a scheduled C-section, um, you have your time set. It's probably first thing in the morning. And for us, we had to be there three hours early and I wasn't allowed to eat after midnight, maybe. I, I can't remember when it was. I think it was about midnight. Uh, so basically, I had dinner the night before just fine, and I had like a big, <laughs> big drink of water uh, before I went to bed, and that was it. Um, so uh, we get there, and like I said, it's three hours before the surgery is actual, actually scheduled. Um, so we got there, went up to the maternity wing, and um, and they basically start prepping you and getting you kind of admitted uh, right away. We went straight to our room um, and uh, the room that I like started out in is the same one that I came back to. So like I said, at our hospital, you labor, deliver, and recover all in the same room, obviously except for when you're in surgery if you have a C-section. So, so that's kind of how that worked. Um, so I get there and they start on you right away. Um, they give you, you know, your IV, and they take your blood, and a urine sample, and, um, and they're also asking you basically every question imaginable about your medical history while someone, you know, while that's happening. And, um, the other thing that they make you do is they kind of, you have to take, like, a, a bunch of wipes to different parts of your body and kind of get sterile and clean before surgery. Um... And that's pretty much it, and that takes, I guess it doesn't take all that long <laughs> for all that to happen, and they give you all your wristbands, um, you know, for identification at the hospital, um, and then later on, uh, the doctor will probably come in and see you, as well as the anesthesiologist, he will bring in paperwork for you to sign, basically giving your consent to receive uh, anesthesia and all that. And um, the nurses will also give you some paperwork to go through. Again, it's really just kind of like birth preferences and some consent things, um, like to receive blood or, you know, different things like that. And all that stuff pretty much takes place um, anyway, with the exception of the anesthesiologist, if you're just being admitted to the hospital to have a baby. Um, so all of that took place when I went to be induced with, um, our son. I, when I got admitted, um, you know, they went through, you know, the medical history, they gave you your IV, took blood, all that stuff. Um, that all happened regardless of having a C-section. Okay, so one of the last things that happened before you go into surgery is you get your, um, your socks on and, um, that's pretty much it. Not a lot takes place um, really other than that. There's a lot of just waiting around <laughs> during those, uh, three hours, and you get pretty sleepy. <laughs> uh, that was not the case with the, with my, when my, when our son was born, because, you know, we'd already been there all, all day, uh, trying to be induced, and, um, uh, so basically when we had that decision made, uh, during that kind of hour between when the decision was made and before surgery, um, the only thing we really had to do was the wipe down and and getting our the the compression socks on and stuff. Everything else was basically done and the visit from the anesthesiologist. So, okay, so you've got your hospital gown on, you've got your socks on, you've got your IV, you've been wiped down, you've been prepped, um, you've been shaved, and you're basically, you're ready to go. Your husband has his... Uh, outfit on, the hair net, and the booties, and the, um, scrub-like outfit, and you are both ready to go, and so surgery is about to begin. So you do separate <laughs> from your husband for a couple of minutes. The labor nurses walked me to the surgical suite, and they walk you with your IV, and, um, you know, they hold your hospital gown shut behind you. <laughs> so you walk into the surgical suite, like I said, you're by yourself, you're not with your husband, and there are a bunch of people in the room. There are going to be your labor nurses, the anesthesiology team, um, a couple of nurses there for baby, and your doctor, 
and whoever's assisting him. So there's going to be like eight to ten people in there. And it's okay if you don't know any of their names. <laughs> um, you're going to know your labor nurses and the anesthesiologist who is standing by your head um, is kind of who you talk to if there's something wrong, if there's something going on, he's the person you talk to. He or she is the person you talk to. So, um, so like I said, once you get in there, everything kind of flows. So you sit down, they give you your spinal, and everything kind of starts to go numb, and they lay you down. You're laying down in a T-shape, so your arms are out to the side, and they lightly strap you down. So once you're strapped down, um, they put the sheet up, they, they finish prepping you, things are going on that you can't really see, that's okay. <laughs> and the anesthesiologist will be talking to you, um, just kind of keeping you calm. He, he, you know, was just asking me my preferred name, if I go by Samantha or Sam, he was asking what my husband's name was, just kind of things to keep your mind off of everything. And he also, um, will describe kind of what's going on, um, uh, once surgery is kind of starting. So after you get all prepped and ready to go, your husband comes back in, he sits next to you, and, um, and things are still moving along, obviously. Things are happening. So, um, yeah, uh, the anesthesiologist uh, will s started saying, oh, there's the shoulder, there's the head, whatever, and then all of a sudden we heard screaming, and baby was obviously here, and um, once baby was out, they moved her over to, you know, the little nursing station for baby, and uh, the anesthesiologist moved the curtain just a little bit so we could see um, see her while she was getting cleaned up and all that stuff. And um, my husband was allowed to get up and go over and see her. So he did that. He got up. He knows. <laughs> He's like, nope, I don't look. <laughs> and he goes over and he sees baby and he stands with her. And then they both come back over and I get to um, hold her. I'm still strapped down. But she sits on my chest. She's laid there and we get like a little family picture. And so she, I get to kind of hold her for a couple of minutes. And then uh, after that, baby and husband leave. So that all from when surgery starts to when baby comes is about 20 minutes. It, that doesn't take that long um, from when you enter the suite until baby is born. It's, it just it just flows. <laughs> and then after they leave, it's probably about another 25 minutes or so until you are all reunited. So baby and husband leave, they go back to the room, and baby in that at, at that point is just being looked at by the nurse or the doctor, whoever, and my husband's right there the whole time um, with, with, um, with our kids, um, with our daughter this past time. So, um, yeah, and I'm being just stitched up and, uh, the, you know, the anesthesiologist is like, we're almost done. They're, they're just cleaning you up now. And I was like, okay. And then they move you, uh, to your hospital bed and then they wheel you back to your room. And like I said, that whole after baby was born until I got back to the room was about 25 minutes, half an hour. I don't really remember when I looked at the clock, but I tried to make a point of doing so to see how long it took. Uh, but I think it was about a half an hour. Um, uh, so yeah, so I was back in the room and um, I, I, you know, my husband and, and daughter were right there. I could see them and they were, the nurses were looking at me, making sure everything was okay. And, you know, baby's still being looked at. And um, uh, once everything is kind of settled, after you arrive back in the room, then I was finally able to like really hold her. And so we did skin to skin and I can't remember if I, I think I tried to breastfeed right away. I can't really, I think I breastfed, tried to breastfeed right away too. Okay, so uh, after that, they just kind of monitor you, uh, they monitor you really closely for the first hour or two and that's the hour or two that um, you don't have any visitors. So, um, um, after that, visitors are allowed, no problem. Um, so one of the things that they do is they're constantly giving you um, like stomach massages to get your uterus to um, contract back down. And the other thing they're doing is um, they take an alcohol swab to different like lower parts of your body to check um, when you're getting feeling back. So they start up kind of at your neck and you know, as long as you can feel it, they go lower and lower 
to kind of see if, hey, <laughs> you're getting feeling back in your body. Um, so that's one of the things they do those first couple of hours. And then once those couple of hours have passed, then they don't really check on you, you know, for a, a length of time. So I think it's four or six hours um, that they kind of come in. You're getting medicine, they're checking on you, they're checking on baby, all that stuff. Um, so that's kind of how that first day works. Um, in the evening, um, I was allowed to get up which they asked me and I said, yes, please. <laughs> um, I had feeling back in my legs. I was, I was, um, before that I was just trying to move my legs in the bed, um, as much as I could. And when they said, do you want to get up? And I said, yes. And <laughs> so we went, I was able to get up and I walked to the bathroom, um, with assistance, but I was, I was able to do it, but they were just, they were just there. Um, and I was able to kind of give myself a sponge bath just standing in the bathroom. It just feels good to stand up. Um, I opted to leave my catheter in um, until the following morning. So early that next morning is when I got my catheter removed. Um, and yeah, so it was, it was just great to get up that evening. I was also able to finally keep down food for dinner that evening. Um, uh, I get pretty nauseous after, uh, the surgery, the, the stomach massages, as well as just, um, changing position makes me nauseous and it makes me throw up. And that was the same for both, uh, when, when our son was born and when our daughter was born. Surgery made me nauseous <laughs> afterward. Um, so I was finally able to keep food down. Uh, the next morning, like I said, I got my catheter out and I was able to go to the bathroom, I got a shower, that all happened that next morning, no problem, and um, I was feeling great. <laughs> um, and other, and then after that, they just basically check on you regularly every, you know, six, four hours, I think it's six hours, I can't really remember, and they're giving you um, medicine and they're asking you, like how, um, on a scale of one to 10, how much pain are you in? Um, so they do that, and that's that's pretty much it until you are discharged. So um, the day baby was born was like day one. Uh, that evening is when I was able to get up for the first time. The following morning is when I got my shower and was really kind of walking around. I was wearing my own clothes after that. And then the following evening is when we were discharged. So. That's pretty much how it worked. <laughs> um, and that was pretty similar um, in terms of timing with our son too. Um, with the exception of, we had an additional day before, um, because like I said, we had an induction. So the induction day didn't work. The following uh, evening is when he was born. And then obviously, you know, everything was just kind of displaced after that. So. That's how it worked for my C-sections. I hope this was helpful in terms of the timing and how everything kind of works. Do you mind? <laughs> okay, Bella, can you please go? So I hope this video was helpful in terms of the timing and how everything worked. That was my kind of walkthrough and experience with, I mean, mainly I talked about my daughter's C-section, the scheduled one, but it was basically the same with our son. Um, so I had really great experiences, loved all my nurses and doctors, and um, yeah, I hope this was helpful. Comment down below if you have any questions or comments or wanna share your experiences. Also, give this video a thumbs up if you loved seeing Bella, <laughs> and uh, uh, stay tuned for my recovery video um, and for C-sections, tips and tricks. Uh, I've done this twice, and I will say that both times I have recovered very well. I think part of that is just I recovered well, but I also think there are some things that I did that really helped with that. So stay tuned for that video. That'll be coming soon. I hope you guys are all well, hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you guys all next time.